Okay, okay, so at face value, the answer to the question of the video may be really easy to answer, but I can assure you that it's actually not as easy as you think. Now, there are a few factors that do play a part in my final verdict on whether or not Boros is the strongest villain we have come across so far in the series, and I will be addressing those factors in this video. But before we get into all of that good stuff, make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe if you're new to the channel because... Why not? It takes like one second and it's really easy and it helps the video out, you know, to get recommended in the YouTube algorithm and all that good stuff. But apart from that, let's just get into the damn video. Now, before I obviously, you know, come to my final verdict, I want to, you know, basically go over some of the major villains that may, you know, some people may see that rival Boros in terms of strength. So the three major villains we're going to be going over are Garo, Saika Sorochi, and god now we're obviously going to start off with garo now garo in my opinion isn't stronger than boros right now in the series and i know garo just recently got a new form like literally in the last chapter but we still haven't seen any abilities from this form so we can't really take that into account when talking about how strong garo is currently in the manga and whether or not he is stronger than boros but we can use garo's previous form which is his form against darkshine which is probably his strongest form so far in the series obviously apart from you know his most recent one that we still haven't seen any abilities from so as we all know garo in his fight against darkshine completely dominated darkshine like garo completely he, he finished darkshine now garo in that fight showed many impressive feats like his durability his speed his reflexes his senses they were all absolutely outstanding and that is pretty much expected from Garo because at the moment I would say Garo is probably an above dragon level threat or maybe even a high above dragon level threat but I feel like Garo at the moment just isn't really on Boros's level because Garo hasn't shown any feats that are even close to what Boros has shown like for example Boros was able to kick Saitama to the moon with sheer force he was able to also launch an attack that could wipe the surface of the earth and I just haven't seen a feat from Garo so far that has replicated that at all or even matched that at all and I feel like putting Garo above Boros in terms of strength at the moment in the manga just wouldn't be fair you know on Boros of course. Now if you disagree with this then I would love to know your reasonings down below in the comments because I genuinely don't see how Garo at the moment is stronger than Meteoric Boros. But anyway moving on we're going to be talking about Saikorochi. But before we actually get to talking about Saikorochi I feel like it's necessary to explain what exactly is Saikorochi because I know a lot of people may be confused and I feel like it's just necessary for me to just tell you what Saikorochi actually is. Now Saiko Sorochi is essentially just Orochi and Saikos fused together along with some power from God to make you know the final transformation even stronger and this fusion was basically only capable because of god i don't think this fusion would be near as powerful as it was without you know some of god's power and saikorochi was actually strong enough to pretty much match tatsumaki in a fight and i feel like saikorochi is actually exactly on tatsumaki's level in terms of strength i feel like saikorochi is about in that high above dragon level category saikorochi isn't just an above dragon level threat saikorochi is like a very high above dragon level threat because the feats Sakurochi has shown are probably more impressive than Garo. Sakurochi was able to completely sever off parts of the earth which was probably one of the most impressive feats we have seen so far in the series and Sakurochi has a bunch of crazy abilities that are very very useful in a fight especially in a one-on-one -on -one fight not to mention Sakurochi is massive like in terms of how big it is it's definitely one of the largest things we have seen in the series uh, along with you know things like Elder Centipede and other really sh you know big monsters we have come across in One Punch Man and I feel like its size also plays a part in whether or not it's stronger than Boros it's definitely bigger than Boros but I feel like in terms of energy output and how strong it is overall it just isn't on Boros's level because Boros in his meteoric burst form is definitely 
faster than Saikorochi. And I feel like in terms of reflexes, it's definitely a lot more, you know, it, it can move a lot faster. Therefore, meaning it has better reflexes than Saikorochi. And I feel like in terms of just pure power, Boros also, you know, takes that category because Boros probably has the most energy output we have seen so far in one punch man because as i said before boros was capable of releasing an attack that could wipe the surface of the earth and sakurochi just doesn't have that amount of energy that she can just release not to mention boros also has crazy regeneration meaning if sakurochi was to launch an attack like boros would pretty much be able to regenerate instantly and of course probably not instantly but he would be able to regenerate and let's not forget that Boris was able to regenerate after a barrage of normal punches from Saitama, which is also one of the most impressive feats we have seen so far in One Punch Man, because I'm pretty sure no other monster has been able to tank or, you know, come back from a barrage of normal punches from Saitama. So at the moment, well, from my perspective, I definitely do believe that Boros is definitely stronger than Sakurochi as well. Now, the final... I guess villain well I can't really say villain but the final major I guess monster we are going to be talking about is God and at the moment we don't really know if God is a monster he's more of a mysterious being or a mysterious entity and to be honest God really isn't a villain and I feel like this is a big factor that will you know affect my final verdict on whether or not Boros is the strongest villain so far in One Punch Man. As I said before, God just isn't a villain. He hasn't been established as a full-fledged villain yet in One Punch Man. So I feel like it just isn't fair to really say Boros isn't the strongest villain when God technically isn't a villain or hasn't been stated to be one. I will admit that God is probably, you know, leaning in the favor of the villains, but it hasn't been explicitly stated that God, you know, God is a villain. So I feel like it's not really fair to say Boros isn't the strongest villain when God isn't really a villain. And I feel like God's motives at the moment are really unclear. So I feel like including God in this video in itself is really just pointless. But I know people will try to say, you know, God is stronger than Boros when God really isn't a villain. And with that being said, I feel like Boros is still the strongest villain we have come across so far in One Punch Man. And if you guys disagree with, you know, any of my points, then you can just comment down below what you think. But apart from that, that's pretty much it for this video. And if you did like this video, then make sure to leave a like and subscribe with notifications turned on and set to all. And apart from that, I will see you in my next video. Kimi no